The immersive environment develops along the border between subjective and objective reality. I would like to start from a question of uh, your beginnings. Yeah, uh, studying at University of Bologna at uh, your fine art and uh, yeah, another university is a filmmaker. How did you start it with extended media? And what was your first viewer experience with immersive media? Okay, so actually I studied more a theoretical uh, course that was under humanities and was more on the history of cinema. This is like the, the address I took. So when I was young, actually my very first interest and that it's always uh, there is uh, it's been on moving image. Um, so also during my university year, uh, rather than uh, uh, fiction or linear storytelling and classical uh, movie production have been attractive to the use of digital video as a communication tool. Uh, that was like early 2000, also when the firewall technology came in and I belong back then to this underground scene of activism. Uh, so much so also that was the Berlusconi uh, time in Italy. We even built uh, this um, project that was called uh, street television so we basically bought antenna in various we were a group a collective around italy but we uh, were so transmitted locally based on the first digital archive uh, back then the the um, platform was called Autistici, so it was all coming from the activism scene. And like that, we were like proposing different content, experimental content, fighting uh, the mainstream uh, Berlusconi. So that was a sort of also, if you think, tactical media, uh, digital performance, uh, and um, also like that in my early, uh, early year, I was doing a lot of VJ set. And uh, also as soon as I graduate, I had um, the chance an opportunity to have this Leonardo uh, European, is a European program for uh, exchange of uh, a new graduating uh, uh, student. And I've been in um, Holland, in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam at V2. V2 is uh, a very historical and pioneeristic institute. It's called Institute of Unstable Media. And I think this, this name already like is a statement uh, for the, uh, their practice that uh, was really indeed uh, trying to always focus on experimental and new aesthetic and language coming from the digital. So what all was like a bit uh, a confused cloud, I would say, of my interest uh, because Italy anyhow back then was not so um, on the age, you know, of experimentation. It was still a bit classical. We had only one festival, which is called Net Mage, then it disappeared. And thanks to that, uh, in Italy, I realized I was more interested in this kind of um, uh, language and research. So for me, my very, very first, and this is actually, I have a nice story, uh, that I would call immersive experience. Uh, and that was very immersive because uh, I had the chance to see and actually I was doing some video journalism. So I was like interviewing interest. So Kurt and Schlager is a former component from uh, granular synthesis had a solo show that was still experimental. This solo show um, consists in uh, uh, walking in this room uh, that was filled by fog, 3D projection, and he was stressing a lot the perception of sound, like with invisible sound. Before entering in this uh, room, there was a warning for, of course, you people you know with problem at heart or epileptic people. We walk in, um, of course, none of us, of my friend had this problem, but actually my memory is that I woke up after I faint out in the main hall 
of the building. Uh, that was why it's funny, because then, of course, I had the chance to meet also Kurt and Schlager in the Sonic X Festival in Amsterdam, where I also was working, doing always documentation. And uh, Kurt, for Kurt, I was a very interesting study because, of course, then I did all the uh, exam. I was not epileptic. And for him, I was, in a way, the success of his artwork. So he could stress so much the perception of the audience, so much so that actually I had a certain kind of vision. I start to see like 360, all these bodies. And what is a really um, interest, uh, weird that after my episode, it also happened to other three young ladies in different performance. So of course it was on the age, uh, but uh, also back then Kurt uh, asked me to make, uh, how do you say, uh, a short talk about my my experience. So I have to say this was really immersive in a way that I could uh, really experience <laughs> on my body how certain feed and input and the composition of digital uh, sound and image could really take you out of your body. Then uh, concerning the very, very first VR, Ah, honestly, you know that I didn't think about it. My very first VR has been, uh, ah, okay, I was working, but this was like a therapeutic um, VR. It was uh, 2005 and I was working as a camera. Uh, I was doing a camera work for a documentary uh, that was actually mapping the new um, therapy um, used for panic attack or PST disorder. So um, the director, we were following this guy that was undergoing through this experimental program from the uh, a center in Milan, uh, where actually he would experience in virtual reality the situation that usually are very difficult uh, for him. So this actually you made me remember now is the very first time I put the virtual reality headset. It was, of course, very bad graphic, uh, you know, uh, and the, the scene I remember was in a, in a, in a metro. Uh, then after that, uh, I have the, I'm lucky, I mean, I live in Venice. And so I think in Italy, the film festival, the Venice Film Festival has been the, ver the very first to have um, official, you know, uh, selection. So since the very first edition that was in 2017, um, have been there watching like their program and as well there was also like a more uh, um, how do you call uh, more artistic definitely more so in installation um, in the Isola uh, di San Giorgio and actually now I don't remember the name but it's very famous it's called Christ it's actually this cries that is like crying um, a bit in a bronze aesthetic, but basically you were entering there and only having this uh, Jesus Christ, let's say. But uh, going back to the program of the Venice Film Festival, um, that has been very interesting because maybe so now I'm a bit critical, but in a way they have like um, a program that is very vast. So it was really interesting, you know, to see all the program because it was really a first glance of the variety uh, possibilities of this medium, going from the documentary to more interactive dance base to a piece that they were uh, definitely coming from the game um, industry and um, uh, storytelling. Um, so. I would say that my bat means uh, has been happened, yes, 2016 for the virtual reality headset, except this uh, old memory I have of the anti panic uh, scene. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned body, and uh, I was sketched by your phrase in your artistic statement that uh, VR speaks the same language as our conscious. Uh, yeah, what, what does it mean? for you uh... this is also interesting in a way okay now i tell you and then i go uh, i tell you also some of my very very first artwork for example in 2008 as soon as i came to venice i was very busy in doing an artwork um looking for the invisible layer of venice in a way which back then 
were garden, you know, because you arrive in Venice, it looks like you only have brick. But if you look from Google map, Venice, you see gardens. So I went there and I do this kind of stereography picture, building a new device, storytelling, because I wanted to take this story that were invisible to the person. Also, then I did an anaglyph, a video. And in that sense, I was more uh, thinking about, uh, I had this actor and I asked the actor to um, repeat two times the same action and acting. And actually through this opposition of, of the two lenses, I was trying to extrude uh, what I call, you know, the dimension of hero, of um, a human. This just to say that I was always, I've been always in uh, in the physical dimension, the images. So um, as soon as uh, uh, in the perception, of course, that's that's come. Uh, that's where my main uh, interest come. I used to have this very uh, simple question, but still sometimes I'm busy with: is are we free to see what we we see? You know, it, it was always like starting from the question. So going back to your question, uh, uh, when I say VR uh, speaks the language of the consciousness, as really as to do with my approach to immersive storytelling. So rather than simulation, where, for example, I want to enter in an experience and I want the most realistic a representation of me there with the body and feeling the body. I very much work in um, uh, experience where your body disappears. What, why your body disappears? Because I think VR is this incredible tool to let us access what sometimes we are not so focused. So how our brain works and how our internal thoughts proceed. Uh, you know, uh, maybe also this is banal, but uh, rea um, virtual reality gives you a lot of possibility in terms of storytelling is really like dreamy, I like, it can really talk also um, of uh, this kind of inner, and here that's why I talk about conscious, when you don't have a linear story storytelling, but you are, you have more like impression that then build a certain story. So this is what I mean with VR. I really find it more than a tool to escape, you know, reality. So I bring you to the moon, I bring you to Mars, I bring you inside, actually. This is my goal. It's really like, uh, you know, when your eyes go, go on the other side. So I do really think, yeah, VR is this kind of, can, can make this shift and to let us uh, yeah, uh, look, uh, look inside and um, not with this <clears throat> analytic way, but more uh, leave the perception, you know, arrive before our intellect when we always have to, to understand what is happening. And also this it's uh, for me, uh, you know, with experimental video, um, it's been always important to try to challenge the convention of storytelling, like, you go in a movie, you know that you start with an intro, you have the conflict, then the climax, and then there is the happy end. As audience, we are very uh, spoiled, and in a way, um, it's a habit for us. In a way, we already know how the story and So I think that VR, it really allows me to kick off this you know, convention. So put the intellect somewhere else and try to be there, to experience. So despite the fact we don't see the body, still we are there in the main center where is the brain to give the signal of the illusion, illusion of being in a place. And maybe later I show you uh, a artwork that I was developing in a residency in Barcelona, which is called Imensiva last uh, uh, June, where I really uh, did work on this, um, on this subject. And also technically, you know, for me coming from filmmaking, um, of course I did this Medusa, which is uh, an artwork that is shot in 360 degrees. Um, uh, this, this has been my main uh, work in uh, virtual reality. I also did like some tests before that. For example, I was replicating myself in this, in this dark space. And then when I, I, I show this piece, 
Uh, I actually, I did an intro where you were actually in the same place where you would be once you had the headset. I dress up the same as I act. So I was actually there putting you the headset and you would see exactly me dressed the same in the exact place. And then everything would turn black and you would have me from different place. On the same time, I was performing around the user in, in, a, in a sort of composition that was challenging the user perception. Because my question was, this was like a bit of investigation uh, project I did before Medusa. My question was, will be the, oh, the user more sensible and alert to my physical presence or to my digital presence. I show this piece in Sweden, you know, where maybe also compared to Italy that we tend to have this body move, uh, body uh, language. They are definitely more um, attent attentive to the distance, but I was really, you know, going to the neck of the, pe the people really also breathed, but in somehow they were enveloped and they were maybe scared more from the digital image of me. Then Medusa arrived and this was a 360 uh, film that maybe we are going to uh, talk a bit more later, but what I want to tell you, the technique. So my first approach of course has been in 360. I don't come from 3D, I don't come from all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, post uh, production. I really shoot, you know, I come more from aesthetic of reality also for my taste and now i go back to my very first experience at the venice film festival um, program i always found that in a 3d environment at first i already lose the illusion there is already like a distance because i don't um, empathize with something that is like a, a fake character, everything is a bit cartoonish, you know. For me, I already see the fiction, the fiction wall. Um, and while uh, also Medusa is this moment in which some uh, people comes very close to you, this was more with techniques that are realistic. Of course, then after Medusa, I want to, um, to uh, how do you say, develop, and also new technology comes in. So much so photogrammetry, for example, and also volumetric video. And my main uh, uh, goal was also to start to put interaction in my, in my artwork, because as you know, 360 is actually, is not, not interactive. This led me to a long path that actually start, yes, uh, then uh, end of 2019, 2020, uh, 20, where I start to learn photogrammetry. I mean, I had like a new project um, and volumetric video with this, of course, always do it yourself practice. This is a bit always my uh, dimension uh, because, you know, it's really, it takes a second that you write a project and then you go there looking for the budget and you wrote like a project, you need a huge studio. So I say, no, I can do little, uh, you know, photogrammetry of little things. I was working on vegetation. I had like a chroma, a chroma key. And then I bought this Azure Kinect. I don't know if you are familiar, but basically, and this is still the research I'm doing, is uh, to combine this depth sensor uh, techniques with uh, a cinematic look. So this is still what, what I'm working. Um, uh, and it's very important then the use of interactivity. As much as you understand, I'm not a fan that maybe it's, a phone is there and I want you to be able to grab. The first project I wrote with interactivity actually was supposing to uh, have the body, you know, uh, disappear and really trying to build a simulation that was not based, uh, sorry, an interaction that was not based on simulation, but on intuition. Um, I found on internet a developer, uh, Sergio Bromberg, which is actually a Colombian living in South Korea. And he's been the, um, um, how do you say, the creative technology technologies of a Korean immersive movie that actually won at Tribeca and also recently 
uh, won somewhere else, which is called Rainy Fruits. And I contacted him because I really like the mix of this cinematic look with the digital. With them, uh, with him, uh, because I knew I need a developer, you know, to make this step because a, a software such as Unity are very complex. And of course you need somebody to guide you. But um, I had the chance to do this uh, remote, of course, residency at the Goldsmith University of London at the arts and computing uh, department because I applied to this school that was really looking for non-expert artists in terms of developing, you know, not programmer, to test a new tool they are um, working at and it's called Interact ML. I advise if somebody's interested to check because they have this huge community, you can drop in and ask. And they are building this um, uh, system that is based on uh, in artificial intelligence that let like artists to program movement without the need of hardcore coding. So basically you teach the machine by performing the movement you're programming. And this was uh, very interesting for me, of course. Uh, if you listen to me, it looks like easy. Still, you need to do some, uh, of course, uh, there is a patch that maybe I can also show it to you. But this happened la last um, winter. And thanks, thanks also to Sergio, I had um, um, the chance to dive into this new language, which actually is user uh, interaction. Uh, but for me, also in that sense, that is something that I did in uh, this piece um, in Barcelona, uh, I didn't want the controller. So, uh, so actually in terms of how uh, you see yourself is really like hand tracking based on a, a, a sort of philosophical question in a way. It's like that, are you aware that your action has the power to influence what surrounds you? So it's not just physical, okay? I do this, you know, affect a consequences is more really about yes our power our thought and action are the one that influence reality uh, apart of physical uh, action but if you want i don't know that maybe can re resume also this sort of uh, new aesthetic i went in uh, with this um, now going a bit more technically talking in Barcelona it was really an exercise because uh, the residency where I was, it, there were like musician, dancer, programmer. And then I came out with this uh, idea and that was basically scanning uh, the space of the gallery. Also in this uh, sense, this is something that I always have. I start from the place where I exhibit my piece. Medusa is really this. Medusa I shoot in the museum where then I also exhibit the place. And I'm really trying to create a short circuit, you know, between the virtual and the physical space. But going back to Barcelona, also in there, I did like a 3D scan of the gallery. And then I, I was very busy in trying to find an aesthetic with this visual effect that I found I could you know, interact with, that was not so digital, digital. And I came out with, I know I, I show it to you, with a sort of hairy, hairy look that to me, you know, in a way where um, depicting an internal membrane, a sort of organ of a primitive creature. So also in that sense, it's like I take the reality dress, you know, of the, this environment in order to show how an environment could look inside. And the body in that piece really act as a mediator. And also in that sense, I really see the body as uh, a membrane to access this experience that in a way invite the user to uh, meditate and to really have a, um, a journey into the self. Uh, if you want, I show you is like a video I use for the pitch. So maybe you also it's easier to follow with some images if you agree. Of uh, I, I thought uh, this work, Celia, you, you, uh, would be the 
uh, yes, the, the, the hottest in the final uh, to uh, uh, to catch attention of, of viewers. Uh, and I was intrigued by the photos. Yeah, really this hairy room and its movement and in, 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 it's interactive. This is actually um, because I like technology, then um, I like technology. I use technology also as an object of, of investigation. And this is a, a screenshot of um, some uh, shooting I did during pandemia with an infrared camera. Um, so actually, you know, a camera that can shoot all the spectrum from UV to ER, infrared. And this is always a bit belong to my research to try to, to see the invisible, you know, the invisible layer. And also in a way, the political approach, because this is like a, a, a technology of vision that was developed uh, from the USA military army in order to, to see the enemy during the Vietnam War in the jungle. So actually, uh, there is this technique that really, you know, uh, can share and show all the green in pink. Uh, but still, for me, this pink then was really interesting to take inside. But okay, I go back. Sorry, I talk a lot sometimes. I go. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's it's fine. We have one hour, uh, and, okay. and you told already yes something about your work. Celia is a six-door site-specific interactive installation that immerses the user in a flow of perceptual mutation. This virtual reality experience is a poetic and visionary journey through the self and the nature of consciousness. In biology, Celia defines the minute hair-like organelles that line the surfaces of certain cells and beat in rhythmic waves. Celia house signaling proteins that allow the cell to sample their environment and respond appropriately. Starting from a 3D scan of a Spronceda gallery, Celia works as an invisible membrane that plays the user on the edge of the physical and the inner worlds. The point of view of the immersive environment overlaps and collides with the perspective in the real space and open up an invisible zone of transit. The immersive environment develops along the border between subjective and objective reality by unveiling their intimate kinship. The body is the only interface and no controllers are needed to experience this immersive journey. A flow of energies reflects user presence in the virtual world and reacts according to hand's movement. A sphere-shaped membrane inhabits the virtual space and it contains another dimension within which the viewer is invited to gather. User interaction is based on intuition rather than simulation in order to convey the feeling of the research of balance within an introspective state. The interaction design takes inspiration from a universal gesture performed by human beings when attempting to connect with intangible forces such as one of the prey or a spiritual invocation. Waves of sound expand and contract according to the size of the spheres, up to envelope users' perception in another dimension, the one of the inner world. The prototype has been developed in the last week of the residency thanks to the collaboration of Daniel Cabanzo at The Sound and Mohsen Hashrati for the user interaction. Being a site-specific project, this immersive experience can be reproduced in any location and the further development plans to integrate a live sound field recording that could be manipulated in real time by user interaction. Celia is a virtual reality experience that aims to trigger a transformative and visionary experience in the users. A very intriguing uh, 
P okay. peace uh, and uh, do I correctly understand that uh, in this gallery person could could come to to the real uh, wall and touch it and in inside the headset it would be the same is this exactly. the same distance yes exactly yes um, and of course, this is, a, I say, is an exercise. I don't see this like a complete artwork, but I thought to talk to you about this piece because in a way it's a good um, example to show the direction, you know, uh, and also more than direction, the study I've been doing, you know, looking what, what, uh, what kind of language can I incorporate. And for example, I did another version of this because in a way it's so specific, you know, I could also scan there my flat and then doing uh, the same uh, at MIT, which is this uh, brand new uh, digital center in Milan. I had the opportunity to do an open atelier in there. And also in that sense, I was scanning the place, applying this uh, visual effect that then is reacting to your movement. And as you saw then, I was uh, really into this body movement, the bodies and interface, and even recalling this uh, kind of uh, primordial, you know, invocation we have, so um, a gesture of humanity. Uh, so a bit this was um, this sort of exercise. But now, you know, uh, it's really matter so to combine, if from my point of view, uh, volumetric video, the photogrammetry, and uh, also, I have to say, now I have an uh, incredible opportunity, thanks to a commercial job, uh, to have the new Canon lens, the stereoscopic. I don't know. Actually, I have it here. I'll show it to you. Yeah, I, I recently I read and news about it and thought, wow. Yeah, I'm so happy, you know, because they say, okay, do you want to have it and give a test? Of course, I can't, I can't uh, uh, publish any tests. It's really like, uh, but you know, now technology is coming, you know, this was like, okay, this is actually what you were looking 10 years ago. And I have to say that the quality is amazing. So um, uh, I think also now the 360 will, will come back uh, in um, not only, I mean, in my research, but also in the VR, uh, because it really, really, really the quality is getting better. And now you can also use this kind of footage on a game engine. So now I'm really a bit uh, going, you know, trying and I'm writing a new piece to combine uh, uh, this aesthetic and trying to see how, um, again, for the illusion, you know, because otherwise I think I'm still into this kind of intervention uh, while I really want to be an experience that um can be a transformative uh experience for the user you know i do really believe and <clears throat> that we are and also that's why since the beginning i was talking to uh, about a critical approach so of vr because i think as all technology you know progress bring the good and the bad um uh, I'm very fan of Paul Virilio, this French philosopher that actually states that as soon as we invented uh, the airplane, we also invent the catastrophe of a plane falling down. But as humanity, we tend only to see, you know, the progress and the positivity of it. We are, and we can also see how Zuckerberg now is uh, welcoming us in the metaverse. Of course, I do have a critical or a point of view, which is, uh, really trying to, um, is not a resistance, of course, it's a sort of resistance to normal, normal to, no, to standardization. But it's very important for me that VR is not becoming just this kind of entertainment tool that takes you out of reality just because it's supposed that our reality sucks, you know? I do really think that VR, and you can really also see in this other implementation in, psych in psychiatry, for example, uh, how much can really rebrain, rewire your brain. Uh, we can't deny the power of impact on the neuroplasticity of the brain. And this, of course, you know, we need new creators and also responsible authors that are aware that this technology can be so invasive. 
um, so uh, now I forgot where I came from, but I think I stop here. <laughs> Uh, you already mentioned, uh, uh, and it's in the list of my questions, your work, The Invisible Hand, uh, yeah. inspired by um, Marx, as, as I understand, uh, and uh, on your website there is only images. So yeah, that's... okay, exactly. And this is the game, because then I think I also have to talk about the difficulties or more frustration to try then to, to realize the project. This is a still working in progress and this is actually what i where i i was working during the goldsmith so uh, i also have some backstage of my um, i come so i tell you uh, the the concept is very easy so i had the um, the idea of create a multiplayer game so this was really you know okay now i want to do a multiplayer game and the basic, uh, yeah, the inspiration is actually the invisible hand, which is uh, the theor theor theorization from Adam Smith, that is one of the first economy, is the first economist of uh, the history, English, uh, late 17th century. And his theory is the base of capitalism. So it say that if all of us pers uh, pursue our individual goal, society will work. So actually this is the base of capitalism, is like to prize egoism, individualism, and the machine will work. Of course, with the piece, I, want, I wanted to show the opposite. I want to show that everything is going to collapse. And the main theme was in this representation, nature. So also this is a is the pro is a process is working progress of me starting to do photogrammetry of this little highland. For example, I show you some. Uh, so you know, I was for example making photogrammetry of a potato. Uh, so this is also was the process, you know, of photogrammetry having all this picture and then taking it in the. In, in the real world, this can be very funny. Okay. Okay. So this was actually how I was working with Sergio. Then Sergio connecting from Seoul. So I was work. Uh, wake up uh, at uh, uh, four o'clock, and you can really see also. I think he near the frustration uh, that I had in a way. I I talked about the dictatorship of the developer. But so Serge has been the one programming and in here we were experimenting this um, patch, uh, this system of the arts and computing department of the goldsmith. And so basically the concept is that there is a sort of battle on this nature that as soon as this hand arrives, it perish. But then you also realize that your hand is part of the system and your involuntary, you know, gesture are also there in destroying um, what is happening. Um, okay, now I just found this and uh, I had an intro because then I was always, um, how do you say, thinking about all this digital uh, world and th there is an intro where I, with the, this volumetric camera, you know, I, I did the scanning of my mouth and then I animated I mean, actually it was me, you know, for me, it's very incredible this, I, can't, I, I don't have to animate. So I shoot this, guy, this sort of, you know, this is me. And, I, and this is like the first, the intro of the invisible hand game where I come to you and I ask you to verify that you are not a robot. And so there is this uh, uh, dialogue, which is a bit sarcastic, but actually, you know, how many times we are confirmed you are not a robot, okay? Where are the traffic lights? How... And so it was really like, um, if you want, I show it to you. This is really because the project, unfortunately, is still there. Needs Experience, to be you have to confirm first you are not a robot. It looks like you are indifferent as only a robot can be. Please act as only a human can do. Yeah, these were some, we were trying, uh, you know, interaction. I'm sorry, 
I can do that as well. Because of course we were uh, we were in a residence about movement, so basically then the text was based asking the user, can you can you make a movement that is human? That was a pretty stupid and then the robot is like saying, no, this is, a, this is not human. Uh, I can do that as well. And then the human do a very stupid, you know, movement and the robot say, ah, that was stupid. So you are a human. So it's, you know, it has this kind of text. So there is this intro and then you enter and, um, and then you find out this more than a floating island with these hands that are busy. And then you realize you do also, you also are part of this game. And you see that your movement are actually the one that are causing the, uh, the, this destruction but still this this is um okay this is for example how you, this is the um, uh, interact ml the patch that let you don't programming but you see teach the machine so actually this was this is based on a machine learning system uh, where you can perform the gesture and i think this is a very revolutionary uh tool that of course then will uh, come uh, user friendly and commercial and can open a lot of possibilities because there is always this um, the working team of uh, an artist, a creator and the developer. And it's also very important when you work in that in that way that you are able to communicate. But I think that the artist should really be able to test the technique in order to fine tune, you know, the um, the right, um, yeah, the right style. So this is actually the process I'm still in. Um, I wanted to show, now I don't remember, although intro. Ah, okay, so for example, you know, you see, this is the technique I use for shoot the hand. So this is a volumetric, this is my hand, and this is this Azure Connect with that kit. So this is actually my hand on a green screen, but thanks to the combination of a depth sensor and a camera, I have like, in this sense, I have one, so it's more like 190s, um, uh, how do you say, 3D uh, depth, but still it's a video. So also the process to find money is very difficult. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it's really important that you, you, you learn the process. And I've been into this um, uh, process since uh, last year. Um, but now, as I was telling you, uh, I'm in the, um, in the process of write a definite project where I will put all this knowledge I got in this, in this time. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned machine learning, uh, and it was written that uh, some iterations there. Uh, do I correctly understand that machine learning were used uh, to track movement of the user? So yes, this, this video, it's not uh, scripted, but it's react on a real movement of the, of the user of VR experience. Perfect, exactly. Uh, Exactly. Mm -hmm. this is it. So you see, okay, this is like recognizing this where the nose, recognizing the movement, then you record that. And also, you know, in this piece uh, for the residents in Goldsmith, uh, for the intro, I also uh, uh, plan that if the user doesn't do anything, because you know, in virtual reality, it's also possible, the user goes in the um, in uh, in um, op in the storage of obsolete technology, and uh, in the storage of obsolete technology, you had uh, robots that were committing committing suicide. <laughs> oh no! Because I was looking for this video before. Um, maybe you talk a bit, and I, I I look for the video because I I actually saw it two days ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was also yeah to tell to to yeah to, to... Uh, uh, yeah I watched uh, you mentioned Azure uh, Connect and a couple yeah. months months ago in Ukraine there was a, a choreography AR project they combined 
uh, yes, real performance, uh, and uh, and you have additional layer of it through your phone, through QR marker, and the simultaneous uh, all the visitors they could watch yeah, the same dancer dance on the mobile screen as this, through the camera. It's the yeah. same space, but uh, yeah, uh, real so and. Um, Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you because, of course, it, it is in first place, it's a, a movement sensor, those cameras. So the example you are doing, yes, um, they are also, they are, uh, they are a lot used in uh, more in perf live performance. But if you want, I show you the, they are scatter actually, they did, they did also to, um, Uh, to moving so they are now this is still a pilot but you know if you combine the azure kinect with um, a camera you can get um, a realistic volumetric scanning they are so crazy that they are even do live holo holo, holo transportation they call it uh, let me see because they were in here. Oh, like, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know about it, and it's yeah, uh, so it, this, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's still this is still primitive, but in a way, it really combines the filmmaking attitude, and it allows you to develop three D content. Okay, this is where I maybe use no where it is. By the way, this is like about the. Um, yes, again. but this is a bit what they are doing. And this is done with the Azure Kinect. Of course, you can see there are still some, uh, but now for sure, this is a bit the aesthetic I want to go. It's like, uh, okay, now I got, I, I come from the filmmaking, I really went in a bit this 3D and digital, but this is the result of the research technology is coming so i'm really focusing on this high quality and as well this canon lenses is pretty promising um so this is really my field more aesthetic from reality rather than 3d so i can see that we have a time for two more questions and one that i have uh, yeah, uh, 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 before you I also work with installations, and uh, for me, uh, yeah, my background uh, in, interest also in theater and, and film uh, as, as you and VR. Uh, yeah, so some people say that VR closer to cinema because it's visual, real, digital, uh, but for me, this is closer to theater because you create a situation where your user uh, become a, a witness of it and it's a challenge uh, yeah, to, to do it yeah, as, as you do change the space and uh, yeah, user walk inside this membrane. Um, but uh, installations, they uh, I also work with the space. Uh, so they don't uh, strictly uh, work with yeah, direct attention and speed uh, of, of the viewer side. Uh, and they, yeah, you, you could hook around inside the installations. Uh, how, how do you feel it? Is it the, yes, I is very, the Yeah, I very much agree with you, you know, with the first statement that I, that's also what I was saying. VR, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, uh, filmmaking or uh, you know maybe the language that I could find closer was documentary so in a way finally you know the dream of being somewhere else and being in this uh, I don't know in Palestine or in the middle of a war or wherever it was there so okay but it's not something that I'm saying you know all the bias of filmmaking such as the frame the editing is not there so you know you don't like you don't want to change a lot of editing also you don't frame anymore and you can't control the user i mean the concept of you know defining the games and i very much agree with you i always say this is theater actually 
the R is the actor is really more like more um, has a lot of more connection from performing arts and as well really ask you to work on the space. That's why also recently, you know, I'm talking and I'm not the only one about spatial storytelling. So it's not anymore, you know, the, the plot, the art is not based on a plot that develops from A, B. At first, the space you decide, you define, it already say a story and more than a story, it carves a psychological state. You know, in VR, as soon as you enter, maybe the story has not start, but the space you have defined and how you interact with that, who is there, what is happening, it's already uh, a story. And, uh, you know, also with Medusa, and Medusa is an installation, because as I say, I shoot in the same, in the same museum where I uh, exhibit. And already in that sense, I was transforming the museum in a theater. Medusa is a very complex uh, artwork that also starts from uh, a work on, um, on uh, the community of Tokyo. So I had also this very young uh, uh, dancer from the academy, uh, the ballet academy, but as well, I worked with this un, um, an unconfined uh, immigrant from uh, um, Afghanistan. And so I had this huge space and basically what I was doing in the, maybe I have some backstage there, but my direction was definitely more theater, you know? It was like testing also because with 360, you have to hide yourself. So we were really, you know, rehearsing the scene and then shoot and they were doing their performance and it was theater. It was really like a way of working on theater. And then the, the, the work I did on the space, uh, because okay, Medusa has to act, but I was really confusing your perception. So as soon as you would enter the space, you would already hear some sound step that then you would see in the, in the headset. As well, there were some uh, um, presence, some sensor that would uh, trigger um, this um, thermic, Okay, you can see this, uh, this thermic, um, the gold thermic blan blankets that are actually in the end of the second act. They are just flying around the space. Um, it would also happen in the real, um, in the real space. So I, I try to create short circuit with certain elements in the headset and in the space. So in that sense, I think also, you know, this, I, in a way, the, the museum become a theatrical stage also for the exhibition um, because things were happening and elements would really disrupt and come into the, um, the, uh, the, the, the experience. And also this piece, it's all based, it's not out of imaginary, it's all based on a, a news, real fact, and also, you know, this in specific, the man with the gun is like a reactment of um, a terrorist attack that happened yeah, in the museum uh, in Ankara. And I really love, because that was the clash, you know, that was like live and people were thinking it was art performance. Uh, and so then I went there and see all the, the comment of the YouTuber and it was really, a sideline description of the confusion we have between reality and, and, and fiction. So people were saying, but no, this is not this is this is not true. And I use all that comment. And I mean also Medusa is super long, but it's good that we didn't speak uh, only about Medusa. It's, it's super long, and that's also you know how it happens that I arrived to um to develop uh, such an artwork because i had the opportunity to win this uh, um it was called artists in production residency and in, uh, in gothenburg with the um, collaboration of the main swedish uh, found linked to this boras Kunst museum and they were looking for moving image artists so i went there and there, they um they also extending my residency. I was supposed to be there three months, but then, you know, I, I they extend the residency. I went in a VR lab. I work a lot with the community. Also, all the actors are non-actors. They are, in a way, representing 
um, uh, themselves, but I had the freedom that in a way also, oh my God, we have this crazy Italian lady in the students with, uh, you know, I was so free uh, that I really had um, the pleasure to experiment. And also that's why Medusa has to act because in a way, you know, then I touch two different uh, language. The first act is definitely theater. Why in the second, uh, just by means of a pretty simple effect, like mirroring, I was playing with the space. So the space of the museum that you knew because you just entered there, start to collapse and you know get like that and then it was mirroring and you could see that it was the space but not really the one that you you enter and so in there i i play more with this kind of surrealistic uh, mutation of the space that was happening very subtle um and it was definitely like more a post-production you know uh, work um while the first is really this kind of uh, theater uh, yeah theater um, with all these figures that appears. Uh, yeah, I had the drone that was flying, so the drone was really coming uh, on the, And this, for example, is one of the, um, the unaccompanied minor because I, I staged the three exams they do in order to get um, the asylum. And in Sweden, absent happens many times that they don't get the asylum, so they are sent back. And I use this the document from the European community where actually they train the interviewer to ask the right question. So I was really, you know, playing with this, uh, um, with this, um, uh, uh, um, oh my God, extract of this document, but having the kids really there, the young boy. And this, you can see, this is a sort of tableau vivant. These are the ballet, the people from the, um, the school. And uh, the name Medusa comes both from the Greek myth, but also uh, the inspiration comes from, uh, um, okay, this is the scene I'm talking, you know. Uh, there is this scene where this performer um, comes and uh, maybe in here you can see. Uh, I should have it in here. And they actually, yeah, this is it. Uh, in a way, I try to reconstruct this, which is called Medusa. The, um, it's, a, um, it's a painting from Jerry Cole that actually was the first affresco that was the pitching, not like the power, the king, but an event of reality. And back then was really, uh, a scandal in the community in French because this was actually portraying uh, the wreck of the French uh, military while they were going to conquer a colony in Africa. Uh, so the few survivors came back and report very horrific acts for surviving between the human people were eating uh, each other, etc., etc. And, and Jericho was so impressed by this day that he decided to defeat. And the people recognized the event. And so it was really a shock. And as you see, from an iconographic point of view, I found this, I was working, these are more like progress uh, images, but I was working on the similarity with the um, immigrants that in South Italy we are having since more than 10 years coming uh, with this boat. And because actually Medusa, uh, again, it's a very complex but in a, a project, but it uh, basically talk about the, Europe, the identity, the crisis of Europe identity. You know, we were so called to be the uh, democratic, welcoming, and qualitarian, but uh, it seems a while that Europe is becoming again a fortress. So between, you know, the academy ballet boy and guys and the Af Afghanistan boys, I try to uh, depict this tension. And then, I mean, I could talk a lot more, but then I stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 sorry to interrupt you, mm, but the last question uh, is about distribution. Uh -huh. uh, what what uh, what's the way for you uh, yet yeah, to to access the audience? Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, in in your artistic statement and side, it's really about the, uh, as as I understand, 
uh, yeah, access and, uh, and experiments and wide, wide audience, but it seems that VR still or, or yet uh, is uh, in some way elit el elitaric uh, yeah, medium. Mm, how I did you solve it? Yeah, I, I very much agree. I mean, I agree with you. The fact that, of course, uh, there is still the problem of the technological device. Distribution to me, it's a question because I did ah, yeah. It's that also, you know, um, comes with the production because it's, there is a lot of, um, you know, it's not a conf confusion, but the realm is so big. Uh, for example, VR, a lot of architects are doing VR. Uh, it really took a lot of design. Uh, so there are a lot of different realities. I think it's very important to understand which is your field in virtual reality. After that, you can start to understand how to produce and where you want to be distributed. So far, for my personal experience, I only had the opportunity of museum or festivals, but they are, it's very, very, how do you say, rare. So, so far, it's definitely art that in a way has, um, excuse me, I want to say not rare, but of course you don't reach a lot of people. So far is anyhow the art scene that is start to be more interest, but if you start to think to the classical um, audiovisual production is totally uh, something else and it still has to be built. Because of course, if you want, you can, you can go on Oculus, uh, but in a way it's like putting your video on YouTube. Um, three days, three years ago, um, I was contacted by this Chinese guy uh, from uh, New York. We also had a, an exhibition, but he created, uh, I think was one of the first channel that is called Chameleon, Chameleon uh, in VR, just for art. And you know what happened? And then, I don't know, after two years, I was looking uh, on Twitch about something and I found out a guy that record, you know, this Twitch that the people, they recorded. And he was in the Zooms. You know, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And the guy was really, oh. The, and then the last, the, the, he was really appreciating this. And the last um, sentence says, we need more people to do, to use VR like that. So this guy was a gamer, I don't know. But it was so interesting to see a live comment on your art. Uh, so I think in terms of distribution, the network still has to be built. There is a lot in terms of production and creators that get together. I really have the feeling that there is a lot of experimentation. So uh, also VR then takes a course and you really have to understand where you want to go. And also if you are free to experiment and maybe don't, don't take care about the distribution also because sometimes distribution is also matter of a money, you know, not because you have to get rich, but you, because maybe you have to, um, yeah, refound what you did. Uh, but in that sense, I very much agree with you uh, that it's still like a privilege tool. We have to democratize this tool. Um, and uh, still, I mean, we are a, re a part of the world that can use this, uh, um, this headset. Um, and, and I honestly uh, think, uh, despite the fact yesterday I was uh, talking, I mean, with the guy about maybe the possibilities to think, you know, we were talking about uh, a school, but more a school, because in Italy, we, there is a huge lack of people with the technical skill and also with the, um, the aptitude, you know, of uh, uh, doing immersive uh, storytelling. But the guy, you know, that was out of this, not from the scene, he told me, but do you think that people buy 350 euro Oculus? And I told him, this is actually the cheapest. So honestly, we have to see where technology goes and take us. Uh, still, I think, you know, this Google card with the iPhone, uh, the, the phone, they are still like, uh, okay, way well, to see. And I saw some nice project uh, in Africa, wherever, you know, where you can't bring all this technology, you don't have the money, it's, it's still uh, something interesting um, to, uh, to use because still we have to, 
remember where all this technology comes from. In a way, it's like stereoscopy and it's all based on the illusion of the depth of field that your brain can give you. Um, but that's also why, you know, I also, I keep working in 2D uh, because I found this like a too much uh, VR in just for VR is like, it's not interest me. It's more like, uh, I don't know, uh, crazy last high tech interest. Uh, for me, VR is really a field that embrace all the topics uh, that interest me, perception, the illusion, it's definitely, I have a political approach a bit what I told you before, you know, I'm so scared of this uh, metaverse horizon movie I'm seeing because I don't know, uh, Zuckerberg for sure is making advertisement. As soon as I see him, I found him so creepy, you know, uh, promoting, we were going on horizon and um, uh, working together. This is already happening. This is where we go, but we are very aware that we, there is a mainstream a market and then there is all the other world i'm very interested in all the other world and uh yeah i mean then if you want to make money with vr maybe you need to go to facebook realities lab and do some animation but for me it's still more like investigation uh, of moving image so as soon as i have more tips for distribution pure i will let you know as well <laughs> uh, thank you very much sir for interesting talk uh, yeah, it's inspiring and uh, thank you for inviting me. <laughs>